Can you please uh, enter conversation? And, uh, definitely in the least behind the scene if possible. Um, we have plenty of gear. It's looking so open up front. So I look forward to seeing all of you folks around the coffee. And yeah, I'm looking at you to come out to the front and join us. I literally know all of your names and are you interested? all of us as we look at our management roles and our research roles. This is the largest oh, meeting ever, as I said, with 350 people registered and 900 cooperators. And it does speak to the mission of the cooperative of bringing people together to work in partnership as a regional cooperative. And I think as everybody knows, starting off first as the Ron really work in partnership. This year really has, I think, the potential to bring us together in a way we haven't before. The topic of looking at our role of monitoring change over time, forest, fisheries, well, fisheries, forest and wildlife, and water resources, and I think bringing us together in a way that we take advantage of making a network happen, meeting each other, and taking advantage of this time focus our efforts on some of the most challenging uh, environmental issues that we have in front of us right now. Uh, we have a very full agenda today with excellent keynote speakers, uh, poster session, and papers. I invite all of you again to spend time meeting each other, building your networks, and together to really focus on the problems and challenges we have ahead of us in the Northeast. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our planning team and organizing committee for their hard work to organize this year's conference, including Jen Pontius, the principal investigator for the Vermont, uh, for the, sorry, for the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative, um, who is a researcher in uh, Riverstein School and a research scientist with the Forest Service, Jim Duncan, the director of FBMC, Mike Finnegan, the database and web development manager. Alan Kasiba, the research projects coordinator, and Mim Pendleton, the site operator, and John Trong, the project and field coordinator. It's now my pleasure to introduce Jim Duncan, the director of FPMC, to kick us off this morning. So thank you all so much for being here, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you again, Nancy, for that introduction and for all of you for being here. This is a thrill. It's been a wonderful year for FDMC, and we I'm excited to give just a brief update on where we are with the cooperative. Um, we've had a pretty active year, a lot of new cooperators coming in, and you'll see a lot of the projects that we have been working on are featured today uh, in posters, and we're excited to have our special working session where you can play long games and learn about what we do. Um, we have lots of great ways to engage today, both with the FEMC and with your colleagues and cooperators here. Um, so 2018, this is a year of great growth 
in our engagement and services. We have added seven new data-driven tools to our repertoire. Uh, we have grown our membership with dozens of new partners and organizations around the region. It's been a, a time of expansion, accelerating expansion in our outreach and our governance. So we've had really great engagement from our state partners around the region, and we've been getting out there and been able to talk with more and more of you and look forward to 2019 when we get to do even more of that. Uh, we're continuing to maintain our core monitoring, uh, which is a challenge anytime, and it's been an especially hard challenge in the last couple of years to keep monitoring going, and at the same time expanding our capacity with uh, new full-time permanent staff members doing research project coordination, doing database and web development. This has really set us up to be able to do great work going forward. And finally, we've been able to actively pursue funding for additional priorities that the cooperative has identified. And I think that's also something that we can help with, but we really draw so much on you all to help us with um, in getting those research proposals together, getting those um, requests for funding out there. Uh, really quickly, some of the regional projects that we've finished up in 2018. We've done a continuous forest inventories method and comparison, uh, which looks at how we can connect as many different inventory programs together, what can we say and comment about them. We developed a document portal for what we call Fragment, the Forest, Inf forest Fragmentation Information Network that allows people to find documents, policies, laws, maps, websites that relate to fragmentation and its impact. So how do we make that easier for people to discover? And we launched what we call the FDMC Climate Connection, which enables people to browse the impacts of climate change as well as climate change data itself. A way to find more resources more quickly to the topic you're after. We also engage with our states to develop rapid state projects, looking at forest clearing in New Hampshire, and luckily dealt with impacts on streams in New York. Have a forest indicators dashboard summarizing 34 data sets in the state of Vermont and their long term trends, and data portals for specific groups such as the Catskill Science Collaborative in New York. Just examples of some of the kind of nimble state project work that we're doing here at the cooperative. Um, I do want to take this moment to recognize our funders, especially the Rubenstein School, the USDA Forest Service, and the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Uh, especially the Rubenstein School uh, provided free graduate reg registration for people to attend, and maintaining that engagement is so important for us in our cooperative community. Uh, the USDA Forest Service has provided funding for this program, and uh, we are very grateful for that continued support. And the Vermont, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources has provided staff time and more importantly counseling insight and support as we think in this regional step. So I want to take a moment to thank all of those sponsors. I also want to acknowledge that we do a lot more people willing to put in money to make this monitoring happen, to make that assessment happen. These folks even over the past year and going forward. Time to uh, thank our amazing staff. Um, everything that we've been able to do this year, we owe to them, Alex Kuda, again, John Trung, and, uh, and oops, sorry, and Mim Pendleton and Judy Rosowski, who retired, but they showed up anyways to help because they just can't stay away. So I appreciate that. Um, our state partnership and committee and steering committee members who are here today, I want to acknowledge you. You've put in a lot of hours of work over the last year uh, to engage with us to talk about issues that are happening in your state and how to knit those into regional work. And finally, this group, the cooperative, as we say, you can't do the FEMC without the C, and we really appreciate your time and effort over this year. And there's one additional person that I would like to thank, and he doesn't know that I'm going to do this, so I apologize, Steve Sinclair, that I'm going to do this. But uh, we went out last conference, he moderated our conference, and we are uh, sad to see him go, but he retired in September. And he has been in the state forest, I believe, for 16 years in Vermont. He had a wealth of information. And when he wasn't actually directing our steering committee and helping us directly, he was always being supportive in the background, helping us with insight and giving us guidance on matters big and small. And it's critical to bring us to where we are today. So I want to take a moment to say Steve's dedication, service, and contributions to the FEMC and the forests of this state and region cannot be overstated. And I mean, he couldn't even stay away from the conference. He came back. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge Steve. Please stand up. I'd like to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Though you may be leaving the state, I hope occasionally we'll make a trip back here and, and catch us again. 
So with that, I'd like to um, end my time. Please get in touch. Look forward to talking to you throughout the day. And I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce Peter Church, the Director of Forest Stewardship for the De Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation. Peter, we are proud to report, has been elected the Steering Committee Chair for the next two years. And he is uh, bringing already a lot of support and attention to the, pro to the position. And we're excited to have him on board. And uh, with that, please help me welcome Pete to the stage to moderate our plenary. Good morning, everybody. So um, as Jim said, I am the Director of Forest Stewardship for Massachusetts. And I'm very excited to be here. Um, Steve called me maybe four months ago and said, Pete, I'm retiring. I need to see if we can get a chair that also has ties to Vermont. Even though I'm the state forester of Massachusetts, I am a UVM alum. And um, my son also come, goes to UVM. So uh, do have ties to Vermont. Um, today, I'm going to be the um, moderator um, slash timekeeper. And I'm going to introduce um, uh, the folks in the plenary sessions. And we're going to start uh, today with um, Tom the field representative uh, for Senator Patrick Leahy, who's um, instrumental in FEMC. So Tom, take it away. When Steve wasn't doing all that other stuff, he's uh, never been shy about being frequently in touch with uh, con congressional staff to let us know what we should be doing at the federal level. Uh, so what, what are we and aren't we doing at the federal level? Um, I'm going to go through a few things quickly. Um, I've just got about five minutes, but I'll be here for um, much of the rest of the day. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, let's chat. Um, when I think about monitoring and, and its impacts and how it plays out in Vermont, um, and this also allows me to talk about Senator Leahy's longevity in uh, supporting this work, I go back to a picture that I stumbled across a number of years ago taken uh, at uh, well up just uh, about at, in the Alpine zone on Camel's Hump. And in that photograph, you have uh, Patrick and Marcel Leahy, uh, both a little younger than uh, they are today. Ronald Reagan's EPA administrator, so that will begin to put a date on it. UVM uh, uh, professor, Hub Vogelman, who had led the walk to the top of the mountain. Jim Jeffords, then Governor Kunin, uh, and the pho photograph was taken by Bob Paquin, who a lot of you know and, and was honored by this group a couple of years ago, who was my predecessor in this job. And what they were doing, of course, was looking at um, the impacts on spruce by acid rain. And that visit, along with a lot of other science and monitoring and the ability to get those messages to Republican, Jim Jeffords and Ron, Ron, Ronald Reagan's EPA administrator, as well as Democratic uh, politicians, and led very directly to the Clean Air Act. Clean Air Act amendments um, uh, that were uh, signed into law under the Republican administration. So uh, the importance of monitoring and the ability to connect with uh, uh, it with the political world was driven home at that time. And of course, there's been a whole lot of good work done in the 25 plus years since then. I won't try to do math in front of a crowd, but um, it's been a long time. But it also helped lead to the establishment of the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative uh, and the importance of monitoring to uh, um, everything we do became evident. And uh, so it was uh, not long after that that the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative was established. And then that's, of course, become the for, uh, Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. Uh, fast forward to where we are now. I've stood in front of this room in the last couple of years uh, with a few minutes to talk. And I know two years ago we were it was a pretty quiet audience. We didn't know what to expect with the change in administration. And even last year, um, you know, we're still waiting for things to settle down. I don't know if they, they really will. But where, where are we a couple years in uh, with this administration and looking forward on monitoring and science and how it impacts policy? Uh, and there's, the news is, of course, mixed. It's not as bad as a lot of people thought it might be with an administration that has not been shy and um, rejecting science and talking about cuts to a lot of the science-based uh, and natural resource uh, federal agencies. And I see a lot of uh, my friends from the federal agencies here today. Um, there is good news uh, in, in that a couple years in, the uh, budgets of the federal agencies that we all work with, many of, many of the people in the room work for, are 
okay, uh, despite proposals by the administration to cut those budgets, they're, they're okay, the work continues. Um, the, uh, there's, there's good news, uh, particularly uh, as it relates to this region um, in the Senator Leahy uh, uh, at the beginning of this administration assumed, at the beginning of this Congress, assumed their uh, Democratic leadership position on the Appropriations Committee and has been able to focus some attention on Lake Champlain and on the region. Uh, it, there was a slight bump up, not as much as we'd hoped in the budget for the uh, Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative in, last year. And in FY19, uh, we hope to see a more significant bump up. Uh, I made the mistake of using the number last year and get, we got the rug pulled out a little bit. We landed okay, but we're looking at a significant increase in funding for the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative if and when we adopt FY19 appropriating bills. Uh, and the other good news in that legislation is that um, we will also, uh, we have the money in there uh, at a couple million dollars to restart if you uh, have tracked or worked with the, um, the uh, NSRC, Northern States Research Cooperative. Um, that will be reinitiated uh, if and when we get the 2019 appropriations bills in place. Of course, there's a wall between us and getting to FY19 and a potential government shutdown next Friday. Um, so who knows? I'm not even going to try to predict. What I will say, though, is, and, the, and this is what the beauty of the senator, um, you know, having the, the position he does on appropriations, we will pass appropriations bills. If we shut the government down, or if the government is shut down, <laughs> we know who's already taking responsibility for that. Um, it wasn't us. Uh, in any case, if the government shut down, it will reopen. And what I would say, you know, worst case scenario for the next budget year is we get a continuing resolution on 2018 numbers for, the, for 2019. 2018 wasn't all that bad. 2019 is actually going to be somewhat better nationally and significantly better for this region with some of the things I've mentioned and more that I could talk about that's in there. So not, not uh, really bad news. The other good news um, is that we have passed a farm bill this week. It'll probably be signed by the president uh, I'm guessing today, and uh, it's a huge bill, and we could talk about SNAP, the SNAP program and a lot of other things, but let's talk about the fact that when we passed the 2014 Farm Bill, the University of Vermont secured a million dollars a month for the first year plus in research dollars from the Farm Bill. It's a research bill. It's one of the biggest that we passed. Now, granted, it may not be all the research that you all work on, but it's important research and understanding ecosystems, uh, et cetera. So that's really good news, and that, that Farm Bill should be signed into law this week. Um, you know, on the bad news front, and, and I'll wind, wind up here, but I'll be, as I said, I can be around and talk about this going further. Um, you know, the administration still um, very uh, willingly rejects science, uh, especially as it applies to climate change. And the speakers who follow me up here will go into some of the impacts of climate change. Uh, our chief of staff coined the term know nothingism and began using it in press releases a couple of years ago describing the approach to science by this administration. And it's almost, I've seen it now in you know, national publications, um, uh, along with terms like gleeful ignorance, willful ignorance. Uh, there is not an embrace of science at the highest levels, but there's lots of great people working within the agencies who understand science and are working on it, and we're moving forward. The budgets are there, and um, uh, there's also moves uh, such as relocating the uh, NEFA and ERS, two of the major research elements of the USDA, uh, kind of shuffling the deck just probably to slow down the research work. But um, the, you know, things are going along, I think, fairly well. And the other thing that we've been able to do, and, I, and I'll wrap up with this, that's really been helpful, and I would thank Dean Matthews and a number of the federal folks here, Fish and Wildlife Service, Forest Service, is with the senator where he is now on appropriations, um, he has asked all of the staff of the subcommittees that write the bills for the Forest Service, for the USDA, for the National Science Foundation, for the USGS, et cetera, to come to Vermont. And a lot of you have helped with those tours. The university has. We've had all of the above, National Science Foundation, USGS, um, Interior, EPA appropriators, the people who write the spending bills have been on the Melissaira. They've been on Mount Mansfield. They've been in the forest with the Forest Service. They've been out with the Fish and Wildlife Service. And so we really are showing, showing uh, the folks who write the spending bills what we're doing up here and how important it is. So, um, you know, mixed reviews on where we stand now, and thanks for all the work. It's a great crowd, and uh, look forward to some more conversations as we go forward. Thank you.